Yes, this is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we turn again to Chile, which on Monday marked the 50th anniversary of the U.S.-backed military coup that overthrew the democratically elected socialist president Salvador Allende and ushered in a 17-year dictatorship under the rule of General Augusto Pinochet, and during which some 40,000 people were politically executed, disappeared, imprisoned or tortured. Allende's daughter, the socialist senator Isabel Allende, spoke at Monday's commemoration ceremony in Santiago, not to be confused with the author. I was the last person from my father's entourage to enter the palace along with other people on that day. We had a mandate to tell what happened then, what Unidad Popular stood for, and the barbarity that had started to rise. Memory is the first step to reach the truth, but we need more to reach justice, reparations, and to ensure that the acts committed on that day are not repeated. In the days after the U.S.-backed military coup in Chile, September 11, 1973, that other September 11th. Then U.S. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger told President Richard Nixon, quote, in the Eisenhower period, we would be heroes and lamented that the media would not fully report on the U.S. role. That is changing now. Last week, a Chilean television channel broadcast a new documentary titled Operation Chile, Top Secret, that was based in part on declassified records about the coup that were obtained by the National Security Archive's Chile Documentation Project. For more, we go to Santiago. We're joined by Peter Kornbluh, the director of the National Security Archive's Chile Documentation Project. On the 30th anniversary of the coup in September 2003, he published the Pinochet file a declassified dossier on atrocity and accountability. On this, the 50th anniversary, 20 years later, the book has been revised and published in Chile for the first time. His latest piece for the nation, Chile, the secrets the U.S. government continues to hide. Peter Kornblu, welcome back to Democracy Now! Today from Chile. Um, can you talk about what is now known and what is not known about the U.S. role, especially as this has been the year that people have feted Henry Kissinger on his 100th birthday. Well, Amy, I'm, I'm delighted to be with you and your audience uh, on this poignant, powerful, dramatic, dynamic, and admittedly divisive 50th anniversary here in Chile. I was actually at the event yesterday where Senator Isabel Allende spoke. Um, she was incredibly moving, particularly standing in front of the very building uh, in which she last saw her father alive 50 years ago. And I do want to say to your audience that Nation magazine has published an excerpt of her memoir um, just yesterday, where in English, where she recounts that very day, 50 years ago, in, in dramatic and, and, and very, very heartbreaking detail. Um, you know, there's a, a lot known about the U.S. role in, in Chile, um, but there's a lot to be reminded of as well. And then there are the secrets uh, that remain. And just to give your audience a sense of what we know, 50 years ago today, on the 12th of September, 1973, Henry Kissinger called together a special interagency uh, committee known as the WASAG, the Washington Special Action Group. Um, and literally within 24 hours of the coup, he was in discussion with uh, these interagency representatives on how to help the Pinochet regime consolidate, even as people were being killed and their bodies dumped in the street and rounded up and put into a concentration camp at the stadium and bodies floating in the Mapocho River here in Santiago. Kissinger convened this, this, this committee. And, and we have the declassified memorandum of conversation. And, you know, actually, the officials there just started joking about, about, about the coup. Kissinger told everybody, President Nixon is, is concerned that uh, we might want to send somebody to Salvador Allende's funeral. I, I told him that um, we weren't going to do that. And then somebody pipes up and says, well, Mr. Secretary, you could go. Um, uh, and then another official says, our policy on Allende worked pretty well. Um, and this gives you a sense of the attitude of, of the U.S. officials and the efforts made literally in the first minutes to help the military regime consolidate. After three years of an effort to destabilize the constitutional government of Chile, uh, the immediate effort to help the unconstitutional dictatorial military regime um, uh, consolidate it, it, its power for the next you know, 17 years. Um, 
There are other secrets that we want to get out. The Chilean government has asked um, the Biden administration for a special declassification diplomacy uh, gesture for this 50th anniversary. So far, only two documents have been declassified. There are many more that have been asked for that hopefully, you know, at some point will, will come out. It's just been announced that President Boric will, will come to Washington uh, for the anniversary of the Letelier Moffat assassination, and that would be a good time for the Biden administration to to release some more documents as a gesture to Chile. And explain who Orlando Letelier was and Ronnie Moffat and their assassination on Embassy Row in Washington D.C. I mean, you know, the the horror of of U.S. policy and its support for the Pinochet coup and the Pinochet regime is that. That regime turned out to be a, a, a regime of state-sponsored international terrorism. That terrorism came to the streets of our nation's capital on September 21st, 1976, three years after the coup. Um, Pinochet personally ordered his secret police to send uh, a death squad, basically, to Washington. Um, agents of the intelligence service uh, here in Santiago, known as DINA, put a car bomb under the under the front um, side of the of the automobile of the leading opponent of the Pinochet regime, former uh, Chilean ambassador to Washington, Orlando Letelier, and he and his 25-year-old colleague, Ronnie Carpenter Moffat, were, were, were killed uh, in this um, act of terrorism when the bomb exploded. So every year there is a ceremony at Sheridan Circle, and, and this year, because of this kind of special anniversary, uh, President Boric, it has just been announced just minutes ago, will we'll be at Sheridan Circle. He gave a rousing speech yesterday, basically saying there are always there's always an alternative to political violence. Um, and it's time for the world, which is in a deep struggle um, between democracy and the forces of authoritarianism, to, 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 to come to an agreement that civil discord, even if people disagree, even if parties disagree, is, is far preferable to the Pinochets of the world. You know, I was just listening to a speech you gave, Peter Cornblue, where you contrasted what Henry Kissinger wrote in his series of memoirs about the U.S. role in Chile and what you actually have documentation of. Because, like President Nixon, Henry Kissinger recorded his conversations, his phone conversation. What were they called? Telecoms, uh, telephone right. conversations, telemems, mm -hmm. telephone memos. Telcoms, telcoms. Telcoms. Can you explain what it was he said, and specifically about the meeting he had with Pinochet, what he said he talked about, what he actually talked about, at the, with the contemporaneous information coming out? Well, we have Kissinger's telecons of his conversations with Richard Nixon, which is uh, kind of ironic, because Nixon secretly taped his phone conversations, and he didn't know that Kissinger secretly taped his phone conversations. And when they talked to each other, they were both secretly taping their conversations. In the case that you're mentioning, Henry Kissinger came to Santiago, Chile, where I am right now, uh, in June of 1976. And he met with Augusto Pinochet. And his aides all told him, you have to be absolutely clear with Pinochet that he uh, has to return to civilian rule and that he has to stop you know, crimes against humanity, stop violating human rights. Because Chile has become a cause celeb. This is literally the memorandum uh, that are going to Kissinger's his briefing papers for this meeting. Chile has become a cause celeb, much like Franco Spain. Um, uh, and the whole world is watching. And all that Pinochet is going to understand from you is, um, you know, a direct kind of uh, reproach uh, for his conduct. And instead, Kissinger goes into the meeting and he tells uh, Pinochet that, uh, that, uh, in, Kissinger's opinion, Pinochet is a victim of leftist propaganda around the world, and that the only crime he's committed is overthrowing a government that was going communist. And Kissinger basically says to him, we want to help you, not hurt you. You did a great service to, to, to the West. I'm here. I have to give a, a speech on human rights, but the speech is not directed at you. But, you know, it would help if you could uh, clarify your position on human rights a little bit, because the U.S. Congress is breathing down my neck, and I'm not going to be able to give you aid. Um, if uh, because Congress is going to cut off that aid um, unless something changes here. But, you know, these platitudes to, to, to Pinochet are not mentioned in Kissinger's memoirs. Instead, in his memoirs, he goes in and says, oh, I talked to Pinochet about human rights. I talked to Pinochet about democracy. 
but we have the actual memorandum of conversation, not a telecom, but the memorandum of conversation that was taken um, from notes of Kissinger's own uh, deputy at that meeting. Um, and he doesn't mention uh, democracy really ever. Um, and his human rights issue is only kind of peripherally tied in um, to all these compliments that he gives to Pinochet. So, you know, the, the, the truth is in the declassified documents, not in the memoirs. Kissinger's memoirs are filled with self-serving spins uh, on his role in history. And his role in history is recorded in great detail on Chile. He was the leading architect of the policies and strategies to overthrow Allende, and he was the leading enabler uh, in the United States of a government of a, a push to consolidate, help Pinochet consolidate his bloody regime. I wanted to go um, back to 2016, to testimonies of survivors of torture under the Pinochet dictatorship, revealed in an art exhibit. The government had sought to keep the testimony secret for decades. The stories were collected as part of a commission launched in 2003 to document torture under the dictatorship of U.S.-backed General Augusto Pinochet. In 2004, the Chilean government passed a law ordering the testimonies remain secret for 50 years, until 2054. But in 2016, this project, launched by the Chilean artist Francisco Papas Fritas and torture survivors, succeeded in declassifying these testimonies. This is one of the torture survivors. On London Street, I was held approximately 10 days. While I was there, I suffered all kinds of tortures, specifically sexual political violence, psychologically torture threatening me with the detention of my children, and psychological torture forcing me to listen to how they tortured other people, which is something very difficult to endure. Psychologically, you are left traumatized, because when they torture you, in some way, you are all the time resisting. But when you listen to how they torture other people, and I have talked about this with several people, it is one of the most difficult things to endure. That's Scarlett Mathieu Iguerico. Peter Cornblow, as we wrap up, the importance of hearing these voices from 50 years ago and what they teach us about today. Um, in the world, the power of the survivors and their testimony, and particularly with the United States, its role in the world. Well, those testimonies, um, which, you know, are circulating here in Chile when, when victims um, are able to speak out, and some of them can and some of them can't uh, because of the horrors they suffer, those testimonies are, are so important. They're human reminders of the horrors, the nightmares of the Pinochet dictatorship. But Chile does not want to go down that route again, even though there are, you know, a, a significant amount of Pinochetistas here, a rising amount, who claim that Pinochet did nothing wrong, that the coup was inevitable, that the coup was Allende's fault, that the United States had no role, that Pinochet was a statesman. All those issues are, are under fierce discussion here as disinformation flows in Chile. And the declassified documents that the United States has lend tremendous evidence to the truth about what happened. And that truth we have to remember, not only for Chileans not to repeat the past, but for other countries in the world, including our own, where the forces of the right, very authoritarian voices are rising into dangerous levels um, that actually threaten our democracy uh, and others.